I'm Jancy Despain with Friday Day Tutoring. Today I'm going to talk to you about Fischer esterification, specifically the mechanism of the esterification reaction. Um, for the purposes of this lecture, I'm going to assume that you already know what esterification is and how to predict the products. So today I'm just going to take you through the simple stepwise process of working your way through the mechanism. A lot of people in second semester organic have some trouble with this mechanism, but if you use these simple steps, it's really not a big deal. And um, it's important to get a good grasp on this mechanism simply because once you do understand it, you can use these steps also to help you with all of the acid catalyzed acyl substitutions. Like, for example, acid catalyzed transesterification, acid catalyzed decompositions of any of your carboxylic acid derivatives. And it makes it really easy. So I want to help you get a good grasp on this. Let's get started. Um, your first step, protonation, is the protonation of the carbonyl oxygen of your carboxylic acid. So let's say our carboxylic acid is butanoic acid. This O of the carbonyl is your most nucleophilic O. So that's the one that's going to attack your H plus of your acid. Now it's going to be positive, and we've done our protonation step. I'm going to label this 1 for our protonation. And notice that I used equilibrium arrows here. Every step in Fischer esterification is an equilibrium step, so you should be using equilibrium arrows. Now our next step is nucleophilic attack. That's nucleophilic attack of the alcohol on the carbonyl carbon of the carboxylic acid. So let's say our alcohol is ethanol. It's going to attack this carbonyl carbon and push the electrons up onto the O. Now I want to point out that all carbonyl carbons are electrophilic, but this one in particular is super electrophilic because once this has a positive charge, it's actually in resonance with the carbocation, which makes it extra positive and makes it very attractive to this nucleophile. So now that this O has bonded to this carbon and pushed these electrons up, we're going to have this structure. And now our positive charge is on the O of ethanol. And I'm going to label this 2 as nucleophilic attack. You can see that our O used to be neutral with two bonds. Now it's positive with three bonds. And if we could just deprotonate it, it would be neutral again. And that's where step three, deprotonation, comes in. So we just need a nucleophile from solution to come and deprotonate it. And the nucleophile that we have for this entire process is ethanol, or whatever alcohol you're using for your esterification. So I'm going to use another molecule of ethanol to come take this proton and put the electrons back onto the O. And we have this structure, which is actually a really important structure for all acyl substitutions. It's called a tetrahedral intermediate. And Honestly, I don't think it's an important structure, but your professor does. Um, they want you to be able to point out your tetrahedral intermediate, and they'll ask you, which of these is the tetrahedral intermediate for this reaction? Um, the tetrahedral, I can't say it either. The tetrahedral intermediate has two important features. It's got a central carbon that's sp3. And of course, if it's sp3 hybridized, that's why it's tetrahedral. And also, there are no charged atoms. You can see that this structure, too, had a central carbon that was sp3, but it also had a charged atom. So it wasn't the true tetrahedral intermediate until we deprotonated and got everybody neutral. They also like to ask you, what will this look like after it's decomposed? What's the decomposition product of this tetrahedral intermediate? And in order to find out the answer to a question like that, it's a really simple process. Um, you just need to know that 
one of the OHs will turn into a carbonyl. And the best leaving group, LG is leaving group, will leave. So if I wanted to know what this was going to look like, I would know that one of these OHs, it doesn't matter which, is going to turn into a carbonyl. And then the best leaving group is going to go away. And out of all of this, I mean, obviously, an alkyl chain is never a good leaving group. Um, and an OR is a worse leaving group than an OH. So an OH is going to leave. So we know one of these OHs will become a carbonyl, one of these will leave, and we'll be left with a carbonyl and an OR. That's an ester. And we knew we were going to get an ester anyway. But I would encourage you to go find some tetrahedral intermediates in your book and see what they're going to decompose into, because it's likely that you may be asked about this on an exam. So let's review where we've been so far. We protonated this O, so that's step one. Then ethanol attacked it in the nucleophilic attack step, that's step two. Then we deprotonated the ethanol oxygen. That was step three. And that got us to our tetrahedral intermediate. Now we need to protonate again. And the important question is, what do we protonate? We need to protonate our leaving group. So you want to analyze at this point, what do we want to leave and what do we want to stay? We know we're making an ester. And an ester needs an OR group on it. And there's our OR group. So we do not want to protonate this. We want it to stay. We want to protonate one of these. And it doesn't matter which one. So let's just protonate this one. All right. So now we've protonated this. This is an excellent leaving group now. And we're ready for nucleophilic attack and elimination. This is, for most people, one of the more difficult parts of the um, Fischer esterification process. And it really helps, I think, to look at this and to realize these happen in one single step that mirrors the E2 process that you learned in the beginning of first semester. If you want to go back and review E2 real quick, let me just show you a typical E2 reaction. Remember, you've got an alkyl halide, and on that alkyl halide, there are some beta protons. And you're going to have a strong base, and the strong base comes, abstracts a beta proton. I'm going to write this here. So your nucleophile, which is a strong base, abstracts a beta proton. And the electrons that belong to a beta proton go to create a carbon-carbon double bond. So here they are. The electrons that belong to this hydrogen go to create a carbon-carbon double bond. And then in that process, the leaving group gets kicked off. So here, this comes and takes the proton. These electrons go to form a double bond. And as a result, the leaving group leaves. The exact same thing, almost, is going to happen here. Our nucleophile, which in this case is our alcohol, ethanol, is going to come and take a beta proton. This is sort of beta. The electrons that bonded this proton are going to go and form a double bond. In this case, it's not a carbon-carbon double bond, it's a carbonyl double bond. And as a result, our leaving group is going to get kicked off. Can you see the parallel? And then we see the result of this. This has now formed a carbonyl. Our leaving group is gone. It's now water. And our OR group is still attached. And we have our ester. 
And once again, I have failed, I do this every time, to draw in my equilibrium arrows. Don't let your professor catching you do that on an exam, because they'll burn you for it. All right, what I would suggest is, obviously you want to practice applying this to some different um, esterification mechanisms, but also practice applying these exact same steps to different acid-catalyzed azole substitutions. Um, it will work for all of them. The steps are the same. If you have any questions or need any help, contact me through my website, www.bridaydaytutoring.com. I'd be glad to help you. Thanks for watching.